Today, I wanted to talk about valves. I wanted to talk about refrigeration valves. Now, a while back, I did a video on the service valves that you would find on a condensing unit. So go ahead and take a look at that. But this time I want to talk about the valves that you might install throughout the system. Mainly two valves. One is going to be the diaphragm valve. The diaphragm valve, it's, it's got diaphragms in it and we'll get to that in a minute. But then the other one is going to be the ball valve. So we have the diaphragm and the ball valve that we're going to talk about. First, let's talk about the ball valve. Ball valve, I think it's great because it does not create any restriction. One of the things in this industry that we have to worry about is creating restrictions to flow. One, restriction to flow in the air system with a ductwork, and two, with a refrigerant. Because every time you start making turns, whether it's a 90 degree turn or a 45 degree turn, you're creating a restriction to flow. Now the ball valve is great because basically what you have is something that looks like this. And it has a little handle right here. And inside, there's like a ball. That's why it's called a ball valve. When this valve is open, it's going to allow free flow right through there like this. So now when we take this handle and we give it a 90 degree turn, what we're doing is we're taking that ball and we're rotating it like this to close off the flow. So this valve, it's great because it's a quick acting valve and it has no restriction at all. The only thing about it is that you cannot adjust it. You cannot regulate the flow. You just can't do it. It's not designed for that. So it's either going to be all the way open so that you have flow going through or it's going to be all the way closed. These can be installed and in, let's say for example right after the receiver so that you can use this as a king valve. On some of these, what you're going to have also is going to be an access port right here. Some people call these Schraders, so that now you can go ahead and hook up your pressure gauge to that. So now with this, we can pump the system down. Other thing that I have done is that I have installed these in the liquid line. So if I have my liquid line here, and there's my liquid line filter dryer, and let's say I happen to have a side glass with a moisture indicator on it, I have installed that valve right there. So now I have the service valve on the, the liquid line for the, uh, for the condensing unit. So I can shut that off, pump it down, and then I'm going to have this ball valve sitting right here. Now with this ball valve, if it has a connection on it like this, then I can just hook up my gauges to that, or when I pump the system down, take this filter out. When I take this filter out, then I put a new filter in, then I pull a vacuum in just that section. So that's one of the purposes, that's one of the ways that you would want to use a ball valve in the refrigeration system. These are great valves, and I've never had a problem with them. The other one, like I was saying, it is the uh, diaphragm valve. As you can see, yeah, it has a handle on it, so that now you're going to turn it just like a globe valve. So you're going to open it, you're going to close it. The good thing about this valve is that you're going to be able to regulate the flow. You can actually adjust it so that you can increase or decrease the flow. The problem is that unlike the ball valve, this valve is going to have, well, let's say the valve is right here with a handle on it like this. So you can turn this, there's your outlet like this. What happens with this valve, refrigerant comes in here, goes up, across, down, and then over. So now you can tell we have one, two, three, four 90 degree turns. When you adjust this, there's a diaphragm right here that's actually gonna open and close this valve right there. So now, these valves, because of all the restrictions, why would you want to use them? Who would use these? Well, when I was in the Navy, we used to have these in what we call the reefers, the refrigeration system where we kept the food. So now, these valves, we would actually adjust the flow because these would be what we call the hand expansion valve. 
the hand expansion valve. So now instead of having a TXV, a thermostatic expansion valve, or a piston, or let's say a capillary tube or anything like that, we would have these and someone would have to sit there and actually adjust and control the flow so that we could maintain the evaporator at a certain temperature, so that we could maintain the room at a certain temperature. So that would be one of the purposes for this when you need to actually adjust the flow because you're adjusting the flow, all of these 90 degree turns are not going to hurt anything. So keep that in mind when you're doing this. Remember, the ball valve, no restriction. It is a quick acting valve, it's either all the way open or it's gonna be closed. One of the two, a 90 degree turn shuts it on and off. This one, you actually have to adjust the handle on here to adjust the flow, but it's meant to adjust the flow. I hope this helps and please like the video, check the other videos out on YouTube, make sure you follow me on uh, YouTube and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Thank you.